Good morning. We want to uh, continue our study of a cell to R group in relation to the, the uh, analytical function theory. So here it will be good to review uh, the abstract scheme which we have used. So we started from a representation row of the group SL2R <clears throat> as shown on presentation uh, before. Uh, that representation row uh, acts on functions which are defined on the homogeneous space SL2R over F. Uh, F is the affine subgroup of SL2R. The corresponding homogeneous space as we investigated it in geometry part of the course, can be identified with the real line. Then for the functions on the real line, we can build Waverley transform. So this is the inner product of a function with the coherent states or wavelets, which obtained by action of representation rho on the uh, mother wavelet V0. So resulting in a product depend from a uh, element of the group G. So it became a function on entire group SL2R. Uh, that uh, group SL2R, it was not mentioned in our course before because we don't need it. Just geometrically and topologically and can be identified with the solid torus, not only with surface of the torus, but with the entire volume of this torus. So it's three-dimensional object, SL2R. However, our group, uh, our mother wavelet V0 was a special one. It was um, uh, chosen uh, as a Cauchy kernel to be eigenvector for the uh, representation row acting on certain subgroup uh, of SL2R, which we denote subgroup H tilde. So uh, for all operators uh, from the generated by this subgroup, V0 is the uh, eigenvector. For this reason, uh, we do not need to keep all values of um, uh, wavelet transform for this group. It is enough uh, just to keep values uh, from the homogeneous space SL2R over H tilde. Well, in the example which we have considered, H tilde is maximal compact subgroup K. So only values <coughs> on that uh, homogeneous space are essential for us. We can reconstruct the entire wavelet transform using only with values. And that homogeneous space, as we learned before in geometry part of the course, was uh, identified with the upper half plane. So. Um, if we make a composition of uh, wavelet transform with such a restriction, we can directly consider induced wavelet transform, which act from function defined on the real line to functions defined on the upper half plane. Uh, so that is uh, integral transform acting between function on these two different homogeneous spaces. Here uh, we may think about that real line, which is homogeneous space SL2R over F, as a boundary to the upper half plane. So such identification is um, behind, uh, is grounded on certain uh, properties, topological properties of SL2R and uh, corresponding relation between subgroup F and subgroup K, uh, how they are located inside uh, SL2R, um, but um, we probably will not discuss that in the great details. Uh, just <clears throat> it may be useful to remember in light of uh, analytical function theory, which we are developing now. So um, <clears throat> uh, when we calculate our corresponding eigenvalues, we uh, may uh, use uh, rather than a representation themselves uh, the derived version of it. So we uh, already link uh, uh, properties of um, mother wavelet to be annihilated by certain derived representation with analytical uh, property of the image of the uh, wavelet transform. Here is a, a worked out example on the case of Cauchy kernel. 
so we are starting again from our representation which work uh, acts on the function defined on the real line uh, and when uh, for these functions uh, we <coughs> can evaluate the uh, corresponding derived representation so it was already done before So uh, we uh, have here vector field A, so uh, that is the formula 18, which uh, give the value of that um, vector field. And the derived representation for vector field N, we may obtain by linearity from B and Z, uh, vector field N, upper triangular matrix, is obtained as B plus a half of Z. So adding them together, we get derivative of function. Then for the Cauchy kernel, uh, so that is derivative of function which we obtain here. For the Cauchy kernel, uh, we may see, uh, which is generated by mother wavelet 1 over x plus i, uh, we may verify what it is annihilated by differential operator a plus i n uh, so a very simple calculation to see that and as a result of general construction a previous theorem we conclude what the image of wavelet transform shall be annihilated by the corresponding lead derivative a plus i n so this is a um, uh, lead derivative which in fact uh, turn out to be exactly cauchy riemann operator so uh, using uh, our representation of SL to R, we built the uh, wavelet transform, integral transform, which map function from the real line to function on the upper half plane, which satisfy two Cauchy-Riemann equation. So uh, that uh, was done somehow um, uh, with some preceding knowledge. So uh, mother wavelet for um, Cauchy kernel was taken out of my pocket. But that may be uh, obtained now completely scientifically just based on that general abstract scheme. And uh, derived representation are very helpful for that uh, to this end. Uh, so let's again uh, consider our representation of SL to R on the real line as we discussed before. And we want uh, what our uh, mother wavelet will be angen value uh, for all uh, elements uh, uh, from the subgroup k and uh, to satisfy that uh, relation we actually need to ask what um, infinitesimal version of it so subgroup k is uh, generated by vector field z so we may just ask what mother wavelet will be an eigenfunction for the derived representation with the uh, vector field z field z and then uh, corresponding differential equation which need to be solved is presented on the screen uh, it's first order differential equation it's um, rather uh, easy to integrate it and a general solution for any L, a lambda can be obtained in this way or uh, slightly uh, put it in a more symmetric form we get such an expression then <coughs> we uh, may note what it's connected with the discreteness of uh, subgroup k uh, that um, if uh, for these complex numbers uh, we uh, uh, will avoid uh, multi-valent uh, uh, functions, so if we want to have only one value for each point, then lambda shall be uh, imaginary unit i times an integer m, and then <coughs> out of additional, uh, so this is uh, first condition, so uh, which we used here and uh, it's still uh, there is a plenty of choice after we made a such substitution m and n uh, can be any integers in additional if we will use our theorem 
about differential operators, we may ask what uh, our integral transform produce function which are annihilated by cauchy riemann operator. So let put an additional condition what m equal to n. So as you can see, the uh, cauchy integral formula completely determined by this two condition. So we want our function will be uh, defined on the upper half plane as geometric set and on this uh, geometric set we shall uh, satisfy to the cauchy riemann equation when we obtain the uh, only solution the cauchy riemann uh, uh, cauchy integral with the cauchy kernel so this is a technology which can apply it not only to the uh, group uh, K, but uh, two other subgroups as well. So one, uh, uh, let's first consider the subgroup A. Uh, can we uh, find some integral representations uh, in similar spirit uh, for uh, this subgroup? And uh, here there is a certain geometrical distinctions which need to be taken in account for that situation. When, uh, so here is the picture which illustrated when we are applying subgroup K as a transformation, say, of the real line on the upper half plane, then uh, that subgroup K act on real line, say, transitively. So every point can be transformed to any other point. For subgroup A, the situation is different. So if we look for the subgroup which fixed the imaginary unit, um, then it will be also fixed the light cone passing that imaginary unit and then uh, that light cone will intersect a real axis in two additional in two points minus one and one which will be also fixed so for subgroup a in fact we have uh, four orbits here interval open interval from minus one to one this is one orbit then complement of the closed interval from minus 1 to 1, that is um, two rays, actually they are making uh, one single orbit, so point at infinity does not break it, so from 1 to plus infinity and then from minus infinity to minus 1, this is another orbit, and two fixed point minus 1 and point 1, they are uh, rather trivial uh, uh, orbits as well, so they are fixed point. So we essentially have here uh, four different orbits, and we may, uh, if we are considering the Wevele transform, we may uh, try to uh, uh, expand function from this uh, fixed point uh, from these orbits um, to the upper half plane, which is um, homogeneous by SL2R over A. So, uh, we are uh, in similar situation. We uh, again want uh, that our <coughs> uh, integral kernel would be uh, uh, eigenfunction for the generator of uh, corresponding rotation. This is uh, subgroup B. <coughs> uh, we uh, generated Lie algebra. Uh, so we have a subgroup of uh, transformation which fixed the imaginary unit. This is hyperbolic cosine, sine hyperbolic, uh, sine hyperbolic, and cosine hyperbolic t, which is exponent of the subgroup 0, 1, minus 1, 0, uh, which is a generator of uh, subgroup B, so uh, times t. So it's t here, t here, so it's e, t, b, and for operator b, we have here the corresponding differential equation. So solving that differential equation, we find a function which is rather similar to the Cauchy kernel as we calculated before.
But this time, as you <clears throat> can see, uh, we may use uh, that special value, which is um, uh, employ the uh, hyperbolic unit uh, J. So in term of this hyperbolic unit J, the function which we obtain <coughs> contain uh, the uh, very similar expression to the previous one, but with only difference what in, uh, complex uh, unit I replaced by J. And here is the graph of this function. It's fastly, very fastly oscillating near to the point one. And then uh, we may correspondingly uh, resolve, use that integral transform, which we uh, obtain from uh, hyperbolic uh, version of um, uh, that analysis, analytical function theory, to resolve singularity near to the end point of the interval. Now, uh, that functions which we calculated from differential equation, that is uh, functions uh, defined on the interval, uh, minus one to one. Uh, similarly, uh, we may treat um, in uh, the same spirit um, certain distributions, for example, uh, to uh, use all, uh, trivial orbits with points plus and minus one, fixed point plus and minus one, we may take distribution delta uh, located in these points, and then uh, that also admissible uh, mother uh, wavelet, uh, although a bit singular, uh, which produce certain integral transform. That integral transform would represent Dirichlet condition for the wave equation. So, uh, as you may remember, uh, when we are studying hyperbolic function theory, so we have the factorization of the second order uh, wave equation into the components which include the hyperbolic unit. And then uh, the integral transform, which we are building here, as was discussed at the very beginning of our uh, course on functions, uh, theory, uh, the integral formula, which appears from that wavelet transform, will be just the solution of the wave equation with incoming and outcoming waves, uh, spanned by corresponding projection uh, with the respect to uh, hypercomplex unit J. Similarly, the function which we built on the previous slides, uh, that may be uh, used to represent Newman condition when we have derivative of endpoints of the interval. And when um, the full um, integral transform, um, if we will collect together all uh, components for the endpoints and interval itself, will produce the well-known classical D'Alembert integral formula uh, for the wave, uh, as for the solving uh, wave equation on the interval. We may again use a similar technique uh, to uh, find the integral transforms associated to the So we will transform associated to the uh, parabolic uh, or dual uh, complex analysis. And in this case, we need to look for the uh, eigenfunction. We will transform need to be done for the eigenfunctions of the lower triangular matrices. These lower triangular matrices are generated by vector fields z over 2 minus b, 
again out of derived representation which we had before we may evaluate the uh, solution of uh, gener generic solution for such differential operator and <clears throat> it turn out to be such a function which contain an exponent of lambda over u and a monomial u to the power n so uh, well it's uh, look a bit different from the um, previous solution which we have here but um, let us use certain relations which uh, exist for the algebra of dual numbers so uh, i recall what epsilon squared is equal to zero so for exponent uh, function if we take an expansion it's really became just two terms so it's a linear one uh, function which we obtain in this way <clears throat> Uh, if we use uh, binomial formula, uh, when again uh, the uh, corresponding uh, binomial formula reduced only to two terms, and finally, if we use an expression for uh, uh, the product of t plus epsilon with conjugated t minus epsilon, the product will be only t squared. So using all that relation it's easy to uh, show what exponent which we have in this case is really again can be written in a way which is very similar to the <coughs> case which we had uh, for complex numbers so uh, function which appears uh, as the eigenfunction for the uh, vector field uh, generating lower triangular matrices is exactly uh, like uh, one which generate complex analysis but uh, again we need to replace imaginary units by uh, the corresponding uh, hypercomplex units uh, unit for uh, dual numbers so that again produce a certain integral formula and we <coughs> may investigate the corresponding function theory so integral transform and uh, corresponding uh, integral kernels are obtained in the spirit of Erlangen program out of symmetry for uh, the uh, corresponding action of SL2R by a linear representation on the real line let us derive other components of complex analysis and this um, time uh, we will uh, turn out to Taylor series and here is some, uh, some general uh, again result so we uh, build the integral transform as we will transform defined by that formula so uh, it's uh, uh, crucial here to have the uh, an expression for coherent states or wavelets which we obtain here so they are uh, functions of two variables so they are function on the corresponding uh, space where we are acting on so in our case say it's a real line and it also has a, a depend from element of the group G so uh, we are using the decomposition uh, which is commonly uh, named as uh, separation of variables we want to separate two variable x and g uh, by means of uh, certain summation or maybe integration over appropriate measure with as it called spectral parameter lambda so if we have such a decomposition um, for our kernel the integral kernel on the wavelet transform so we may just use linearity of inner product change order of uh, inner product and that summation or integration uh, to obtain uh, a certain expansion for wavelet transform in term of eigenfunction for uh, our subgroup g so in elliptic case when we have <coughs> calculated 
all our eigenfunction, so all eigenfunction in the <coughs> complex case was uh, for subgroup K was already uh, calculated, it's here. So we make a decomposition over such a power and essentially that lead through the um, <coughs> Kelly transform uh, if we are uh, applying Kelly transform to map our function theory from the upper half plane to the unit disk, when uh, the composition over that eigenfunction will, will turn exactly to the, the Taylor series, because that um, expression, that fraction which we have here, this is uh, exactly powers of variable Z on the unit disk. So, uh, Taylor series appears as a decomposition over eigenfunction with corresponding uh, subgroup. Here, uh, in the theory of representation, in particular of semi-simply group or in, uh, con uh, in the um, uh, case of Heisenberg group, for example, um, there is an important technique uh, which came from, again, physics and the study of harmonic oscillator. This is so-called uh, raising and lowering operators. <coughs> so the general framework for this raising and lowering operators are as follow. So <coughs> we have a generator uh, Z uh, of certain uh, belonging to the Lie algebra, and we are looking for operator L plus and L minus, which are eigen uh, functions or eigen vectors, rather say, for the commutator. So, namely, Z commuting with L plus minus produce a back L plus minus with some eigenvalue, lambda plus minus. So, we are looking for eigen functions or eigen vectors for commutator with, with vector Z. <coughs> What, what is an advantage of uh, such eigenvector? It's um, really uh, useful because as it is easy to demonstrate through that two-line calculation, um, that operator L, which is known as ladder operator, they raise and lower the index of corresponding eigenfunction for operator Z. So if I take eigenfunction VK, apply uh, operator, say, L plus, through the commutator relation, I can see what that function L plus applied to VK became eigenvalue of Z with the eigenvalue IK plus lambda plus. So in this way, <laughs> We have, uh, and for the operator L minus, action is similar, but we have just minus lambda minus in that case. So what appears. <clears throat> so uh, name ladder operators come from the following diagram. So if we have a subspace consisting of eigenvectors with um, eigenvalue IK, when ladder operator L plus shifted to the right and uh, ladder operator L minus shift uh, that eigenspaces to the left. So we may <coughs> obtain uh, the elements of corresponding eigenspaces uh, just from one vector by means of ladder operators. Applying it uh, sufficiently many times, uh, we can obtain any other um, eigenspaces. And I recall uh, vectors from these eigenspaces, as it was shown on previous slides, uh, just uh, are elements which are used in the Taylor expansion. So again, wet ladder operators are closely related to the Taylor expansion of uh, Wavelet transform. So this is a general scheme. It's very well known for wet subgroup Z. Let us see if we can find <coughs> the ladder operator uh, in general terms. So, if we have subgroup K, uh, our ladder operator shall be element of Lie algebra, so it's uh, 
as element of Lie algebra, it shall be decomposable uh, over the basis of this Lie algebra with some unknown coefficient a, b, c. So uh, if we use uh, the defining relation for the ladder operator uh, through the commutator and known commutator between basic uh, elements of the basis, we will find what a coefficient a, b, c uh, shall satisfy to two li uh, linear homogeneous condition. <clears throat> and that is solvable if and only if uh, the lambda uh, plus squared is equal minus 4. So that means lambda plus shall be uh, either plus or minus uh, 2i. So that is the solution which we obtain <coughs> from uh, that uh, uh, equation. And so ladder operator from subgroup A uh, is what is well known. That is just uh, uh, operator uh, spanned by A and B. So we may look for uh, the similar ladder operators uh, for other subgroup. So, for example, if we take subgroup A, then we need a vector uh, B from our Lie algebra. And similar uh, decomposition over the basis in terms of coefficient A, B, C lead to the system of free equations, <clears throat> which is solvable if and only if lambda squared is equal to 1. Well, of course, we may take value lambda, square, uh, lambda in this case to be just plus or minus 1, and corresponding operator, ladder operator for that vector b, will be <coughs> uh, spanned in term of real uh, and uh, real coefficient in the decomposition. But uh, as, again, from this course we've seen on, on many occasions, uh, for the equation lambda squared equal to 1, there are other solutions in terms of our uh, hypercomplex hyperbolic unit G. So we may substitute with G as another uh, value of lambda, and then we will have additional set of vectors. So if in hyperbolic, in the usual case of complex analysis, so, uh, ladder operators are unique, <clears throat> and they lead to a one-dimensional chain of eigenspaces. In terms of hyperbolic unit J and double numbers, uh, the ladder uh, uh, operators uh, act in two dimensions, and instead of one-dimensional chain, we have two-dimensional lattice of eigenspaces. So <clears throat> we have uh, that structure uh, similar structure, so here uh, one line uh, structurally similar uh, in one direction goes like a usual chain uh, of eigenspaces, but we can act by hypercomplex dual double uh, ladder operator in perpendicular direction. That leads to some uh, uh, richer structure, really <clears throat> uh, what happened in the usual uh, situation in quantum mechanics, it may be what our eigenvectors here uh, in the space V I K are annihilated by uh, L minus. So uh, it may happen what this vector space disappear because that action have eigenvalue zero. So then uh, that means our uh, chain is, is going just in one direction to the right. So it's like a ray. And when uh, that uh, annihilation by L minus is really the condition which generate exactly the condition which generate the uh, Cauchy Riemann operator. So if you come back to that uh, theorem which we had before. <clears throat> 
what uh, our mother wavelet is annihilated by operator D. So this is exactly if D is L minus, then that means what negative uh, part of the chain disappear. And for example, uh, for in terms of complex analysis, that means when we uh, decompose analytic function into Taylor series, uh, so uh, we got only positive uh, powers of Z. No negative powers of Z appears on an analytic function. So this is just a consequence of uh, that <coughs> two results uh, from uh, representation theory, which we mentioned. On the uh, two-dimensional lattice, uh, the picture may be much more interesting. So uh, that particular eigenspace may be annihilated by a real oper uh, ladder operator, but do not uh, may not be annihilated by a double ladder operator. And when uh, the structure uh, which we will have here, analytical structure, will not be reduced to that uh, array uh, out of the uh, eigenspaces, so it will be some uh, subset of two-dimensional lattice, so which really um, much more complicated uh, situation and it uh, requires some further study. <coughs> Finally, let us consider um, the uh, ladder operator for the subgroup N of lower triangular matrices. Again, technique is just the same as before. Uh, we decompose the uh, unknown ladder operator over the basis with coefficient A, B, C, D, and we are solving the corresponding uh, system of linear equations. Uh, the compatibility condition here for solution to exist is that lambda square is equal to zero. Well, in terms of real uh, numbers, solution uh, lambda equal to zero is suitable, so potentially you may get the corresponding uh, ladder operator, but that ladder operator will not be useful because um, according to that scheme, a ladder operator is shifting eigenvalue of a vector by the amount lambda. If lambda is equal to zero, that ladder operator exists but does not produce a shift of eigenvalue. So uh, there is uh, no uh, any benefit to have that operator which is existing but completely useless. Nevertheless, in our situation, we may find other solution uh, for that equation lambda squared equal to zero. Uh, that, of course, comes from the uh, dual numbers, and um, generator of the dual number is uh, epsilon, a hyperbolic uni uh, parabolic unit epsilon, has that property. So lambda t can be any real number times that epsilon. And then we will have corresponding ladder operators <coughs> which contain that parameter t. So unlike uh, uh, complex case and hyperbolic case where our ladder operator have a discrete action, here we have an action uh, with a shift by any uh, real number. So here interesting to consider <coughs> Uh, the uh, role which played by corresponding complex numbers in the uh, create, uh, that construction of ladder operators. For uh, if we will come back to the uh, complex situation. Uh, where we calculate ladder operator uh, for subgroup K, the compatibility condition was lambda squared uh, equal minus 4. 
And for this compatibility condition, introduction of complex number is necessary just for existence of rising lowering operator. And this is the only operator which we obtain with the lambdas equal uh, plus or minus um, 2i. In situation, uh, uh, so this is elliptic situation. For parabolic situation with lower tri uh, triangular matrices and dual numbers, uh, they are uh, not necessary. So we do have some solutions uh, with real numbers, but that are useless solution. So introduction of dual numbers make ladder operators for situation with subgroup N is useful, uh, make that useful. And finally, if we will come to the hyperbolic case where we look for ladder operators with subgroup A, then uh, usage of uh, hypercomplex units J, hyperbolic unit, the double numbers, is not either necessary, so we still have um, ladder operators with real values and they are useful, and so uh, that is like an extra feature, so that is just produce that two-dimensional <coughs> pattern which has additional uh, structure, which has that additional situation. So, uh, as you see here, um, the role <coughs> of um, hyperbolic units, if we are moving from K uh, to N and then uh, later to A, uh, the role of uh, hyperbolic units is diminishing. So initially, we, without them, we do not have ladder operators at all. When we have them, but they are not useful. And finally, we have useful operators even without uh, the uh, hyper, uh, complex units. So this is how that um, ladder operators are linked to our uh, three types of hypercomplex numbers which we are considering. So uh, really, uh, consideration uh, may be at this point, it useful to formulate <clears throat> a principle which uh, uh, somehow summarize a relation between three subgroups K, N, and A, which we identified within SL2R, and the uh, corresponding hypercomplex units. So, uh, first of all, we see what there are a great similarity between K, N, and A, so actually it's almost everything what we are able to do with subgroup K and what is traditionally done is only for subgroup K, also can be repeated for subgroup N and A with a similarity between three subgroup and the very second part of this principle is correspondence to make successful attempt to expand consideration from subgroup K to subgroups N and A we need uh, typically replace complex number by dual and double numbers. If we are doing that, if we uh, make corresponding replacement of uh, hypercomplex unit, then uh, we may achieve uh, quite a large uh, level of similarity between different theories. So uh, that uh, principle was already illustrated um, on several occasions. Initially, it uh, was geometrical illustration, just if we want to represent action of SL2R on corresponding homogeneous spaces with corresponding subgroups, when they appear as Möbius transformation with respective um, uh, hypercomplex numbers. When we use uh, corresponding uh, hypercomplex algebras to represent rotations, of um, the uh, unit uh, circles in three geometries, then uh, in construction of uh, linear representation of three subgroups, uh, the corresponding hypercomplex units uh, are playing a suitable role. And finally, uh, maybe that illustration with rising and lowering operators is another uh, uh, good place where role of hypercomplex units uh, is shown in close connection with three uh, different um, 
types of uh, subgroups, one-dimensional subgroups, which we have considered and which SL2R having. Okay, so uh, that is end of our uh, second part, um, uh, which uh, consider function theory based on SL2R. So we still have one lecture, and we will consider how SL2R interact with operators on that lecture. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Hope to see you next week.